Hello everyone and welcome back to another US Simile 101 channel video. Um, if you are a returning subscriber, um, welcome back. I'm really happy to have you. Uh, if you are new here to the channel, welcome. Uh, I hope that you would check other videos on this channel and um, and consider subscribing. I do regular videos just like this one, um, at least two or three videos per month and I answer a bunch of questions and also I do some videos um, such as the recording of my studies and so on. Um, and that with that out of the way, uh, let's get started. So today I'm going to do, um, I'm going to answer a question, a really important question actually, uh, which is how to perfectly use a question bank. Uh, this is a really important question and really important video actually. If So feel free to share this video with anyone who's uh, starting the USMLE or who's doing the USMLE right now. Uh, I highly recommend that you would do so. This is going to help him or her a lot. Um, so let's get started. So first, what is a question bank? A question bank is just a bunch of questions uh, from people who are experts in the field uh, and they do these questions as practice for the actual exam. So they are not the same questions that you're going to see on the exam, but they are similar um, as much as they can make it. And these questions are not um, the same questions you're going to see on the exam as opposed to something else as MBME. I'm going to talk later on about what is an MBME, but in MBME in general are the same questions that you would see on the exam, but they are uh, expired questions from previous exams. So this is the main difference between the two. Uh, now with this out of the way, the question banks actually is just like 2,000 to 2,500 questions questions per question bank. Uh, usually they cover everything that has to do with a specific step, so step one, two, and even three. Um, and that's that's what a question bank is. When this out of the way, now let's know what uh, the uh, uh, types of question banks that you were going to see, or the names of the question banks that you're going to see um, uh, in general. So the first and the most famous is the USMLE World. Uh, this is the most important one, either for step one or step two or three. And the second is going to be the question bank from Kaplan. Uh, it's really important for step one and somehow important for step two. And the final one is the USMLE RX. You're going to see a whole bunch of other question banks, but those are the really famous ones. Uh, USMLE RX is done by the people who are in first aid. Uh, it's really important for step one. I wouldn't really recommend it for step two, but for step one, it really is um, important. And uh, we're going to see how in just a little bit. Okay, uh, so the uh, the um, these third thing I want to talk about before I, uh, I go into the steps on how to use the question bank is what is the difference between an online bank and an offline bank? Okay, so an online bank is the question banks that is intended for use in general. This is just the actual uh, question banks that you are uh, uh, that you can subscribe to online. Uh, and uh, I'm gonna drop a link in the description for all the question banks that I just talked about and how to subscribe for it if you would like. Uh, they have a bunch of subscription plans for one month two months and and so on and it differs sometimes it's from like eighty dollars to a maximum of like three hundred four hundred dollars depends on the time and the question bank that you are subscribing to uh, but that's an online bank just the actual bank that you're going to do an offline bank in contrast is just a um, um, somebody who actually did the online bank and he took like screenshots of the questions and put it in a PDF file so other people can use it without paying the subscription fees uh, of course this is unethical uh, sometimes the, um, uh, the the person who's doing that gets caught and the subscription plan is uh, terminated and so on but I I think it helps sometimes I know it's unethical and everything but some people especially from countries like mine or um, other countries who are not in a good financial situation uh, they can't really buy these subscription plans and uh, they use it to do uh, good things in the end so um, the ends doesn't justify the mean but you know what I mean so that's an offline bank and we're gonna see how you can use it um, um, during the steps that I'm gonna talk about as well okay so that's uh, without the way now let's talk about the steps and how to approach it okay so what is the question bank that you should use and when should you use it okay if you're doing a step one let's talk about step one first if you're doing step one the question bank that you should be using first is going to be either the question bank from Kaplan or Yosemite RX. And you should use these questions as subject-wise questions. Uh, so you are going to answer the questions from a specific subject that you have just studied. So you study uh, a specific subject. Let's say you're going to study physiology and you're going to study the cardiac physiology. And after you're done, you go to the question bank, either this or that, the question bank from Yosemite RX or the question bank from Kaplan, and you answer the specific questions related to the part that you just studied. This is really important because it will help you retain the knowledge that you just studied and at the same time it's going to help you to practice what is uh, uh, how the questions for that subject that you just studied are going to be on the exam. So this is really important. 
after you're done with all of this, you're going to be done with the question bank, say Yosemite Rex or Kaplan. Uh, at the end, you're going to do the Yosemite uh, uh, step one for the Yosemite world. And uh, you're going to do it random and timed and everything. And this is going to be later on after you're done with studying everything in that uh, area. Uh, for step two, it goes the same way, but it's, it's kind of difficult. Uh, some people use the Yosemite world um, subject-wise and so on, along with their study. Uh, some people would approach things differently, just like I did. I used Kaplan, and I'm going to use the Yosemite world um, just like I did with step one at the end. And it's going to be random, timed, and, uh, um, and not related to a specific subject after I'm done with the studying. So this is when you should use it. So use one question bank during your study and one question bank at the end, uh, kind of like a general review. Uh, this is the first thing. The, um, um, the second thing is how you're going to answer uh, the questions. Okay, so um, as I said, in Kaplan and in, uh, um, and in uh, Yosemite World, uh, you, uh, it's kind of different approach. In Yosemite World, you should do them uh, as a um, um, random questions and not subject wise that's just my recommendation you can do whatever you want but this is just my recommendation and in Kaplan or Yosemite Rx you should be doing then subject wise along with your uh, study so uh, I mentioned the word timed what does it mean timed means that you have to time yourself uh, when you are doing these questions uh, it's important to do it from the beginning this is important because it will help you uh, in, 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 in like a giant way uh, when it comes to the exam because in the exam time restrictions are really really bad and you're not going to be able to answer questions really um, just like that without uh, practice so you have to practice answering questions uh, in a specific time and doing 44 questions per hour um, that's going to help you a lot so you should do this from the beginning and not wait till the end that's going to help you a lot so the uh, the third or the fourth, I don't know, the next step is the um, uh, question answering technique and how you're going to review uh, the answers that you just did. So what I would do is just answer like a block, for example, and like 44 questions per, per block, that's just the standard. And um, after I'm done with that, I will be um, viewing the right or wrong answers. Uh, I will take each question. I would say uh, to myself, well, the right answer is and let's say A, uh, I have to know exactly why is this the right answer. So this is the first thing you should do. You should know why your answer, either correct or wrong, just know the, why the right answer is the right answer. The second thing to know is why all the wrong answers are wrong for this question. So it's not just about answering a specific question right or wrong, it's knowing the information. Uh, a question bank is a learning tool instead of just a questions that would um, tell you how you are doing or it's not an assessment tool. It's a learning tool. This is really important. This is the most important thing to get from this video is that question banks are learning tool. You're gonna know from the beginning, um, start with knowing the why the right answer is right, why the wrong answer is wrong, and when can these wrong answers be right in a different question. Uh, this is really important because it will help you answer other questions and it's kind of like answering one question would qualify as answering five different questions. This is really important and that's what I would do. Um, now, I, I've done the question, I've uh, reviewed the answers and so on. Uh, what next should I do? The next important thing is to annotate your answers uh, or the important information that you got from each question. Uh, for each question, the uh, let's say the first uh, question I got uh, the right answer and um, the information I know already from the book, but I found a piece of information in the other questions that are not in the book that I'm reading. So I took that information I wrote it down either on a piece of paper or inside the book that I'm reading and I had that saved uh, in the area uh, that is related to it inside the book. Uh, my uh, my understanding is that some people would uh, annotate those uh, answers as notes uh, and they put it in a separate like um, uh, uh, separate uh, notebook or something like that from the book that they're reading from, like say Master of the Boards or First Aid uh, for Step 1. Uh, I highly recommend that you would do uh, something differently. You would take those answers uh, or the piece of information you got from the uh, question bank and you put it in the area where you have uh, uh, deficient information in the book. So uh, in Master of the Boards, if I have a question in cardiology for example and um, 
I see a new piece of information, I would write it down in the area where it belongs in the book or where I think it should be in the book, uh, um, either first aid or again, um, master of the boards. Uh, this would help you a lot to have at the end a giant book with a lot of annotations uh, to read from and it's going to be kind of like a concise uh, USMLE curriculum and this helps from, uh, a lot from, <clears throat> from my perspective, from my experience in step one and in step two CK. So that's how it, uh, it will be. Uh, at the end, I will just want to say just general notes uh, about what I said before. Uh, it, you can do something kind of like uh, saving the, um, um, that's what I did in step one. I saved uh, all the images or all the pathology uh, slides and all the illustrations that the uh, Yosemite world had. Um, that uh, that would help a lot, just save it. And at the end, you can review it all together. Uh, this will help a lot. Uh, also, if you are doing the, um, <clears throat> step one or step two, you will have some questions that has some media in it. Uh, usually they have to do with heart sounds and lung sounds and examinations and so on. Um, I highly recommend uh, something, the um, uh, kind of like the um, videos that you would see on, uh, on YouTube. I will link some in the description below. Uh, and also I have kind of like a recording by um, um, by a doctor uh, that he did for the lungs and the, the heart examinations uh, that's going to help uh, as well i love it and it was uh, helpful in step one so i will link it in the description below as well and um, finally if you are uh, if you are not doing any question banks if you just need some practice uh, in general before the exam or in any time at all there are some um, some questions that the MBME put it for free for everyone just practice questions I don't know what like they are like 150 questions uh, it's not important that you get these questions right or wrong the um, the main benefit is to practice for the exam and to be familiar with the software that you're gonna see on the exam this is really important so if you are not doing anything just do this at least this is the um, Sorry for the, this is the least uh, uh, that you can do uh, to practice for the exam. All right, uh, I, um, I hope I, um, I answered some of the, um, uh, the questions that you might have had. Uh, if you have any other questions related to the question banking and, um, and how to answer them, uh, please write it down in the comments below. Feel free to subscribe to the channel and to, um, to give a thumbs up on the video and share it with friends and share it with people who might benefit from this. Um, and um, this has been the Yosemite 101 channel, Ahmad Rodwan, and I'll see you in the next one. All right, bye-bye.